Okay, so here we're building a wall. Let me speak! <laughs> right, so. This started after I left the London School of Furniture. I built guitars in my garage for a while, and 25 years later, there are now 10 of us building our own brand of unique guitars out of our workshop in Canterbury. Hi, I'm Alastair Atkin. Uh, this is another video from the Atkin Guitars Workshop. This is episode five. And in this episode, you're gonna see, what are you gonna see? You're gonna see a top being braced from start to finish, the braces being made. Uh, we're gonna look at some acoustic guitars that we've just finished. Uh, an old friend of mine, Jeff, is gonna pop by. And you're gonna see Lawrence building the new CNC room. Um, so enjoy. Um, I'm here with my mate Jeff Alexander here. Uh, Jeff's a teacher at Christchurch College in Canterbury. Uh, have been for what, 40, 42 years? 42 years. Um, when I started uh, with our mate Andy Crockett in his barn 26, seven years ago, this was the first guitar I finished in that barn. And I started it at the London School of Furniture. Um, so this is the first acoustic instrument I ever made and it's a classical uh, guitar um, with maple back and sides and a European spruce top. And this guitar I finished and uh, Jeff was the first person to play it. And I can't play the classical guitar, but Jeff's got a really good repertoire and I remember him playing it. And weirdly, it just popped in today and uh, we thought, right, Jeff can do the soundtrack for the video. So um, yeah, the, the, I, uh, what happened to this, I, I, I gave it, uh, or no, I, I sold it to a friend of mine, um, uh, my mate Dez, and a few years later he sent it back, he said, I th really think you should keep holding this. So I owe Dez something or other for giving this back. So um, yeah, you should give me a whirl. Let's see if it's still... Blow the dust off. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's not been played much for a while. some of the guitars we've finished this week. I've got four here, um, all got a few different things going on. Uh, this first one is for Kiefer Sutherland, the, uh, the musician and actor. And um, He's got a few of our guitars over in the States and he's coming over in January. He was gonna be touring, but the touring is now off for this first part of this year. But um, he ordered another pre-war D37. He's got one of these back home. He got his first one from Acoustic Vibes out in Phoenix in the US, um, but he's coming over to do some touring over here and he wanted to keep one in the UK. So we've made him this uh, pre-war D37. Um, it's got a Adirondack top and Madagascan rosewood back and sides. Um, it's also got a Madagascan rosewood head veneer. But what it's also got is a V-neck, a sort of vintage V-neck, which is uh, really pretty cool for a guitar like this. Um, he, he likes to use these Fishman sound hole pickups. Um, uh, it's the humbucking uh, rare earth, um, and he has those on all of his guitars. I'll give you a little, uh, little strum. Plenty of clout. It's uh, it's a real sort of cannon. This one. Um, so yeah, that's that's Keeper's new guitar. We're building a wall to make another room for the new CNC, which I have lovingly covered in tools. Don't show Alistair. Okay, so we've had to move this door from here to here and build this wall and move that window. It's been really fun and no trouble at all. Now this is CNC number three for the electric guitars, so it's going to be all, all for me and Phil and Matt <laughs> in the electric yes. guitar department. Woo. 
also just finished this OM for a friend of mine. Um, this one's got Brazilian rosewood back and sides, uh, which is really quite smart. Again, this is one of those sort of uh, guitars that's got all the bells and whistles for a, uh, trying to do a sort of 40s, 30s era um, OM. It's got Adirondack top. Yeah, like the Brazilian rosewood back and sides. It's got a 45 millimeter nut um, and it's got the V neck. Uh, but again, these things, really sweet tone. It sounds really old. So today we're going to talk about bracing. I'm actually going to show you. I was making the braces and gluing up these braces onto one of our tops to get this end result. So upstairs we've got a flat top ready to receive his braces and we start here with our lovely bracing stock so this is all strip pine material uh, we buy it from a local wood supplier and all of this has been baked in our advanced heating device in the kitchen oven um, and now sitting on the shelf ready to make for our various models of guitar we've got big stock up here bigger guitars that have thicker materials and smaller guitars have smaller materials so what we're going to do is we're going to cut and sand prep and then glue onto the top the X-Brace and the fans. So we start here with our X-Brace source material which is a pretty well caught sawn piece of strip pine. Um, we cut these in readiness and bake them so they're ready when we need them. So this one's good to go. So this will form our X-Brace which is this part across the middle of the guitar. And we're going to get a corresponding piece for the fan braces. Show down the bottom here, um, and then the other bits along here have actually already been cut out because they come from our guitar top. So we're going to run to the laser, we're going to put these in the laser, um, and then you'll see the laser doing its magic to create what's essentially three parts that form the X brace, and then these two parts that form the fan brace. This is the 19. Um, this is a guitar that we designed um, with. Rudy Bolts uh, from the Fellowship of Acoustics in the Netherlands. Me and Rudy often sort of uh, Facebook text each other and, and come up with ideas for new guitars. And um, this is one of those. Uh, it's a 15 inch width on this body. So it's like the size of an OM, but the shape of a J43. Uh, it's a really comfortable guitar to play. It's, you know, nice weight there as well. So it's it's got it's a good sort of songwritery type of guitar. But and it, yeah, sounds super. So uh, yeah, sick top, mahogany back and sides, mahogany neck, um, and uh, rosewood fingerboard and bridge. Uh, yeah, lovely fire stripe pit guard there with the beveled edges that we build in uh, make in house super little thing so that's another one this week so we're going to cut our x-brace out so we're at the computer which drives the laser system so we're going to open up our file for our x-brace um, worth noting we've got approximately 26 models and across those 26 or so models is each guitar model has got a unique x-brace so not all x-braces are the same so on our computer We've got files for every single guitar, and I'm going to call out the one for today's guitar, which is a 19, sometimes referred to as the watch. And on the screen there is a representation of what the laser will cut from this piece of wood. And so from this one piece of wood here, we're going to get out the two struts and the cap. And it's a really efficient way to use wood compared to doing it by hand because if you're drawing it up in the CAD, it means that all the little bits that might otherwise have been lost because you're trying to navigate them with a jigsaw or something of that kind, you've actually got on the file. So, we're gonna load this into the laser and then we'll see it do its magic. Beautiful thing with this system is the laser is quick and it can estimate how long it's gonna take. So we know once we put this in, it's gonna take about seven minutes. And it gives me seven minutes to go and do something else, which is normally sanding up another one of these. So as a workflow item, it's pretty cool because once cutting one you can be preparing another 
which I'll show you on the next step. The most important member of the team in this room is Mr. Laser Snail. Without Mr. Laser Snail, you can't set the lasers to the right height. He's even got goggly eyes. Atkin branded with a nice torque to shell as well. The really importance of this is to set the height of our laser. Um, because it's a light beam, if it's too close or too far away, it flays, so you don't actually get an accurate cut. So although we've designed the CAD to cut it perfectly, if the height's out, it can move the cut by a millimetre, two millimetres, and that's enough to undermine what we're doing. So yeah, Mr. Laser Snail, very important. Final one now is the Triple O thirty seven. Um, this is the same shape as the OM thirty seven, but it's got a shorter scale length. So this one has a twenty four point nine inch scale length, and it's got a slightly wider fingerboard, uh, forty five mil at the nut and fifty seven mil at the bridge. Um, Indian rosewood back and sides, a baked Sitka spruce top. All the bracing is baked as well. It's got the ebony fingerboard and bridge. Um, and then it's got that Atkin decal logo on it as well, which goes with all these, uh, this style of guitars. Super, super sound. Great finger picker. This is the sort of guitar Eric Clapton would have played on his unplugged, sort of uh, unplugged concert. Yeah, again, really popular model for us, that. So that's, yeah, a few we've done this week. Well, so we've got a bit of laser. This is our X brace we cut earlier. Now accompanied by all the other bits that are gonna go inside the top. So we've got our various brace types that are gonna go inside. So we're gonna break these out. We we'll call it breaking out, just take off the excess material. So these now, we've got a couple of jobs. The surfaces we're gonna glue, if we wanna get rid of all the excess. Um, but also our braces following the traditional Gibson and Martin patterns are scalloped, which means they're kind of thinned out towards the top, little dips in the middle, so we're also going to shape this. So it's the hand finishing step. All these braces, and then we'll go upstairs and glue them on to the guitar. <laughs> It's prepped, everything's off the sander now, all ready and finished. And I've just sat here and just hand finished it. Basically, all we're looking to do is get any marks, any burn, anything that's less than nice clean wood. It's completely gone now. Um, when we made these, we checked all the squares so we know they're going to lay flat. The next job is to get these cut, prepared, attached to the top. So we want everything super tight, super, I guess, super flat in the gluing presented by a challenge that the guitar top isn't actually flat. In fact, it's going to have a bowl in it, which has got a radius of about 30 feet. So all of these items have got that bowl mirrored across them. So I'm going to dry fit it before I put any glue near it, just make sure I've got no gaps, no, um, kind of no leans, I guess, in the braces, because we want them to be square. Um, and there's going to be a bit of cutting and a bit of fitting to make sure we've got everything snug as we need it. Then we'll move over to the glue press, and we'll use our new bracing prep system to make sure we line everything up as we need it to be. So I'm going to crack on with that and uh, you can enjoy watching it. We've cut that X brace, got both parts of it, we've prepped all the other parts. Um, while you weren't looking, trim them all to spec. So what we're going to do now is just have a dry fit test. So we're just going to lay everything onto this on a flat surface just to check if there's any gaps or anything that's not quite going to fit and also to make sure that we're meeting all the markers that are on this top just to show us that the X is perfectly aligned. The position of that X is really really critical to its sound. Um, with the early Martin guitars an inch movement in that X would change the guitar from being great sounding to being dreadful sounding. So all of ours are marked and we pursue it with, yeah, with aggression. I mean, it's got to be there. So the X is in there. Um, a recent introduction we've made, between Danny, my teammate and I, is we've begun to notch our fan braces, some people call these tone bars, we're actually notching them into the X brace. Um, we're all quite interested in the history of the Martin Guitar Company and the Gibson Guitar Company, and this is something that they pursued in their early years of manufacturing, but given limited materials and expertise, it wasn't something they could necessarily get right all the time. 
Um, quite like the story. It was a, something they wanted to do but weren't able to. Um, with modern tech, 100 years later, um, we've been able to use the laser to get these in a perfect position and a perfect size. So we've just recently introduced this. Um, it's a real advantage because it locks in a really critical component under another. Um, gives us better structure and better stability with the braces as well. Um, but tonally, although there's some disagreement in the workshop and, and in the general guitar market about how these minor differences might make a difference, it is all locked together, it's all tight. It's just a common sense logic that if vibrations are transferring from one part to another, the more they're connected, the more vibration will transfer. So yeah, we are chuffed to have that one in there. So I'm gonna work through placing all these bits. Um, just check that we've got perfect alignment. And then you could maybe cast the camera over it, Raph, and you can be our Alistair's prefect. Just check if uh, we've got any gaps. So we've completed our dry fit. So on this board, we've taken each one to make sure we've got a right, perfect angle, so we've got a really good balancing up. Um, we know that everything's proportionally correct and we're within our perimeter. So now we're gonna move it over to the glue press and we're gonna put some glue on it shut the press and we'll be left in there until it's stuck real tight and then we'll clean it up. If it's stuck real tight with the glue press, about 25 to 30 minutes and you would struggle to get it off. Optimally, if we leave it in there for an hour, then it's pretty much ready and just a little bit of time to cure before it goes in the box. So it's pretty good. Um, when we get to there, we will be using our clip system. And you're more observant amongst you might be wondering how we make sure we've got everything in the right angle. Um, and we've moved from having old plastic templates, which have been really, really good and really valuable, to a new system where we're actually just using clips um, around the perimeter, which you'll see as I'm gluing it up, and they give us some big benefits. Um, it's universal across all the guitars. It's not using bucket loads of plastic, which is great. And also it means we get pristine, perfect millimetre precision with the placement of everything. So you'll see that as I go through. <laughs> Everything on everything's wet with glue now. All around it, we can see the glue coming out, so we know we've covered all the surfaces. Um, so we're one step away from shutting the lid, which is great. It will stay in here for about 30 minutes, and this is our clip system really doing its job. Um, so clips give us efficiency because it means everything goes in here once. Previously, this was being done in three steps, and when you've got millimeter precision layout being spread across three steps, the odds of you getting complete lock-in and complete alignment of all the parts. It's pretty slim even if you're absolutely on it. Um, the beauty of this system, it all goes on at once. So everything has to tie it together. It's pretty difficult to make a mistake. Um, so for us, it gives us efficiency, but also means that the instrument's consistency. So this 19 or watch guitar will be braced this way. The next one will be braced exactly the same way. Um, I guess the system brings that consistency because you're not working in parts, you're working in one move. Um, it doesn't require me to be having my best day to get the best result. I could be having a pretty distracted day and the system's gonna make sure the customer still gets a perfectly braced guitar, which is quite lovely. So with that, I'm gonna shut the lid and we'll see you in 30 minutes. finished braced guitar top um, so this goes for its final quality gate now which is just we check it to make sure it meets all of our bits all of our standards really so on the front we check our rosette make sure we've got a perfect joint make sure we've got no gaps final check to the top to make sure we've got no dents or marks in it because the next step it will turn into a box so it's too late to address anything so we're good on the face and on the inside all the work we've just done is now finished and the final check is making sure all those braces are perfectly flat We've got no lifting ends, 
basically we've got a full glued surface across the entire thing meaning that we've got a really lightweight resonant top which is well braced and rock solid um, so all these braces are super tight we've got no gaps we've got no lifting ends so now it can go and meet its other half which is the back we'll be waiting on the shelf and for next week's guitars that is the first pair that are ready to be sandwiched into a box and if we journey through next week we'll be completing the other nine for the batch um, we always aim to get two done on a friday just take pressure off on a monday because we don't know that uh, and that's where we are that's the guitar top braced and ready to go if you enjoyed this episode uh, please subscribe to our channel go and watch some of the other videos we've made we're on instagram and facebook go and tell all your mates and comment in the box below if you want to know anything else that we're doing at the workshop here thanks for watching cheers